All right, guys, welcome back to another Unplugged Alpha episode, podcast number 92. Uh, we're going to be diving into how women unintentionally lie to men. Um, I think it's a interesting discussion point because a lot of dudes are sort of sleepwalking through life with this notion that um, they commit, they love, they marry, they engage. And uh, we're all good forever and ever until kingdom come, until death do us part and all that sort of stuff. And I'm not saying women, you know, lie, but I think that's a way to sort of caption the title, not just for attention, but to get right to the point. And there's just four things that I uh, put in the description for this one that are relevant. Because, um, well, if we're being honest, I could do 40, but that would take hours. So let's hop into these four items. Um, before we get started, make sure you guys head over to YouTube and uh, join me over there. Watching live is always the best way to do it. So you can get in on the call-in segment, which I usually drop about halfway through. So join us on YT. I'm just going to drop this in all chat. So if you're elsewhere on the interwebs, like on Twitter or whatever, head on over. And um, yeah, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Um, the first one that is really disturbing for a lot of guys is they don't understand the reality of boredom in a long-term relationship. And this gal, Esther Perel, wrote a book quite a few years ago, Mating in Captivity. Um, women actually get bored a lot faster in relationships than men do. The first parts of the book are a little bit slower, but when you get more towards the meat, meat and potatoes of it, and a lot of her stuff is pretty good if you have the patience to sort of dive down through all the different rabbit holes. Um, definitely worth getting into. Mating in captivity, add it to your reading list. It'll help you understand a lot of the dynamics. I've, I've, I've come to realize that there's really three different angles to hit this from when it comes to ant fully understanding relationship dynamics. There's the area of uh, the red pill or the mano swamp, if you want to define it further to that sort of globalist sort of position. There's Evo Psych, and then there's Psych. Um, and I notice as I pay attention more and more on Twitter, there's a lot of headbutting in all three of those areas. And I don't think any one of those areas gets it exactly right. But I think if you take all the best parts from each one of those areas, you can end up with very useful information. And this first one about boredom, I think is incredibly important. Um, they've studied this and they know this factually and also behavioral speaking behaviorally speaking, you know, when you deal with these um, folks that are professionals in this field, writing books on it, stuff like that, uh, women's interest in long-term relationships or their desire for the guy, it's more of a hockey stick shape. They've got strong desire at the beginning. And if you're not good with your game, it doesn't go like this, like it does for men. Okay. That's, that's a typical trajectory for most guys in a long-term relationship or in a marriage is it starts to decline. You ask any guy that's been married for 10, 20 years, they'll make all kinds of jokes about their wives. Oh, I haven't seen my wife's tits and whatever, or this, that, and the other thing. It's just like, you know, they're trying to make light of a difficult situation with some comedy and that's how they handle it. But the truth matters with women, their, their desire and their interest in a guy over a long-term basis, it's more like a hockey stick. It's whoosh, straight down and then sort of across. Um, it doesn't always have to go this way. You can push that bar up to a very similar position to the way the men's uh, desire or boredom starts to grow in a long-term um, you know, relationship. Because familiarity, it, it, it adds to the boredom. You know, It's one of the reasons why you'll notice when you're dating and you're living apart and you maintain separate households, the desire is there. You're looking forward to seeing each other. You'll get more of the sexy texts hey, wear this when I come over or make sure you're naked when I come over sort of thing. There's not a lot of married people that get texts like, hey, make sure you're wearing this when I get home from work. Um, although I've heard some people joke about it, but I know in reality that's not really what happens. So the first point that I wanted to cover in this is I don't think guys really understand and women tell them this, you know, I'll just love you forever. You know, just commit to me, buy me a ring. Let's have a family. It's going to be amazing. We're going to love each other da, 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 and all sort of stuff. It's like, yeah, that's the idealistic notion, but the truth of the matter is, is women do get bored or faster, border, bored faster than men. And it's one of the reasons why I believe anyway, women file divorce um, something like eight out of 10 times versus men who are doing it like two out of 10 times. Um, we've, we've heard lots and lots of stories. I've covered it in podcasts. I've had callers call in and talk about stuff like this. And 
it's not that uncommon. I'm not saying it's common and it's the everyday norm, but it's not that uncommon for women just to, you know, 12 years down the road after the 2.1 kids and the house is uh, taken care of and they got the cottage and a station wagon, a white picket fence and a fluffy white dog with a sweater and all that sort of stuff. It's not that uncommon to be like, I'm bored. And they go look for something else. And, you know, sometimes it's a retreat to some yoga thing. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, getting on the yoga, yoga instructor, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so it's, it's something that exists that you have to be aware, aware of. And they do say this, uh, factually. And I, and I strongly believe, and I've mentioned this many, many times on my channel, my in-car videos as well, is that you can do anything to a woman except bore her, uh, do not bore a woman, make sure that you're doing something of some significance with your life. If you're going to invest in, let's say raising a family with, you know, with a woman or taking the pledge of a marriage, you know, for example, uh, the, the burden of, of doing that work is, a, is upon your shoulders to entertain and excite her. It, it's not on her shoulders. Um, so make sure that you recognize that because it is a factual reality. Um, we've got Moff in the green room who's taking care of you guys. Uh, call in segment. I should drop the link because I know a lot of you guys tend to, you know, pop in and uh, don't get a chance are sitting there waiting. So make sure if you do have a question tonight or you have uh, something you disagree with me on or something you want to chop up, you click that link. I'm going to drop it in the YouTubes right now. So join in and ask a question. Actually, I could probably get Moth to drop this in because he's got a new And pin message to the top. So if you guys have a question, hit that. Uh, Moff will clear your audio and make sure, uh, you know, you're set up right for the uh, Q and a segment, but let's carry on. Let's talk about cheating. Um, it's unknown, but actually true that women cheat as much as men. I've heard some experts purport that it's actually more than what men do, but because of slut shaming, then it suppresses the factual data on this which I find is interesting because it, it still seems to have some control or some play in culture and society today. Uh, there's also the notion that women will do it, that, that women will go outside of the relationship um, quite a bit more when they're ovulating. That's usually when they do it, right? Because there's that small window in the month where they've got that strong desire, especially if it's not particularly interesting relationship or marriage or they're bored or they might be contemptuous. That's another strong leading indicator that the knot is about to untie in your relationship is if she expresses contempt for you. You have no idea how bad women can behave when they express contempt, when they're disgusted with you. Um, they'll do anything and they'll lie about it right to your face. They'll, they'll come home after they've done it and they'll lie about it right to your face. Um, don't think for a moment that women are sugar and spice and all things nice. And I'm not trying to say this to separate, you know, the sexes or to alienate. It's just a fact of reality, man, that you have to understand that again, you know, she can say, I love you, the kingdom come. We're going to raise a family, da, da, da. We're going to do all these things and, you know, be partners in crime, da, 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 da. But Hey, you know, when Kevin in sales shows up and he's looking handsome and you're boring or you're being a douchebag or you can't hold down a job uh, because you keep getting terminated, um, don't be surprised if Kevin starts looking like a more entertaining option on a long-term basis, even if you've taken vows, even if you've gotten married, even if you have a family, even if you have a house, even if all of those things are in existence and in place, women do cheat. And a lot of experts purport it's more than men do now. But again, because of slut shaming, that's one of those things that keeps it in check. So the admission of, of guilt isn't always acknowledged. That's reality, man. It is what it is. Um, the other interesting point that I want to sort of spend a little bit more time on with the second one is the ovulation part, part, part of it. And this is where shit gets a little bit weird because it's actually going to require that you pay attention to her ovulatory cycle. Um, if she's dressing in comfortable clothing and hanging out with you, Netflix and chill, whatever, for most of the month, but then she gets dressed up, puts on her lipstick and makeup and her push-up bra, exposes a ton, ton of skin, stockings, does her hair for hours. Hey, I'm just going out with the girls. We're just going to do a girl's night. We're going to do dinner sort of thing. And you start to pay attention to her ovulatory patterns and she's doing it when she's ovulating. That's a pretty good sign that she's not into you. And 
things are about to go down or they might already be going down. Um, it's fine for the girls to get together. It's fine for them to have a dinner. That's fine. But if she's, if she's dressing up more when she's going out than she is in your company or when you guys go out and do things, you should be raising an eyebrow and asking questions of yourself as to why. Why is this happening? That's interesting. Whenever there's a change in behavior, whenever there's, whenever your spidey senses start to tingle, you got to ask yourself, why? Why is that happening? Right? And then you start taking a look around. Well, let's, let's try to understand this. Oh, that's interesting. She's ovulating these, these three days. Oh, and in the middle of that, she wanted to go out with all her girlfriends. Oh, no, she didn't come back till four o'clock in the morning. Oh, and she took a shower before she got into bed. Oh, you know, start asking some questions of yourself. Um, you have to be attentive to the, you know, this sort of stuff because it does happen. It does exist. And it is something that is unintentional and that men, it's not un unintentional. It, it's intentional when it happens, but the unintentional lie of, um, you know, the promise of perfection, the promise of true love into perpetuity. You have to understand these things, right? Let's talk about uh, mate switching, which is also known as monkey branching. If you don't know what that, what a monkey is, I'll illustrate it for you. They hang from one tree, and they monkey branch, they grab another one. Before they continue on with this branch, they have to let go of this one. So there's a period of time where they have two branches in tow before they decide to let the momentum carry them on. This is a funny little term that has been around for quite a few years, and I'll reiterate it today and what it is, but women do monkey branch faster than you think. We think as guys, especially when there's hurt involved, when there's disappointment, when there's letdown involved, that, um, you know, she's probably behaving the same way. You know, she's probably crying in her room. She's probably, you know, sulking about it, maybe journaling about it. She's sitting in her room journaling about it by candlelight with a feather stick and the ink dipper like you think in the movies. None of those things really happen, okay? Um, they've surveyed women, and I covered this in my book, by the way, if you guys are new to the channel, you should get the book because this entire podcast series has built on what this best-selling book has become and will include parts of a lot of this, the, these talking points in my follow-up book and the updates that are going into this one later on this year. There's some big things coming this year. But women have admitted that they have a backup plan 50% of the time. Now, the admission of having a backup plan 50% of the time begs the question, well, what are the other 50% thinking about if half of the women are essentially admitting to being sluts, right? They're, they're basically in a survey format admitting that they are not good wife material, that they are potentially going to go out of the relationship, and they actually have a backup plan. So you got to ask yourself you know, the question, well, okay, well, what about the other half? Because again, we've got checks and balances in place that still exist, like slut shaming, uh, which are preventing other women from admitting that they have a backup plan. And in many cases, not just one, it's like several. Um, if you're a younger guy, you probably haven't heard this yet. So if you're in your 20s, for example, this is probably not a soundbite that, that you're familiar with. The first time I heard this, I think I was like 29 or 30 or something like this. And there was this gal that was dating um, a buddy of mine in the office. And um, I don't know, he, was, he wasn't around or maybe he had switched jobs or something like that, but he, had, but he had disappeared. Anyway, so she's like, hey, you know, let's go out and get lunch. I'm like, sure, whatever. You know, let's go out and get a bite to eat. I'm not, I got a type and it's not redheads. Let's just say that, okay? So she's a redhead and, you know, we're sitting down and she's all, so I'm going to have a baby. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, that's interesting. I didn't even know you were pregnant. So when did this happen? And she's like, just looking at me. And I said, well, what's the plan? And then she keeps staring at me and she goes, I'm looking at it. And I'm like, what? And she legit thought that I would impregnate her because I was her backup plan for what didn't happen with the guy that she was dating, this friend of mine. This is the, this is the vortex of screwery that, you know, tends to happen. Um, you know, as women start to get older, especially, you know, when they get into the thirties, definitely into their late thirties, a lot of them contemplate backup plans, right? If it doesn't work out with this, then I know that my beauty has an expiry date or is on the decline perhaps. So I'll back up with this guy or that guy. And it's not even that uncommon for them to do it with like, not just straight dudes that are potentially, you know, friends of, of theirs. Like he's just a friend. That's why I always tell you guys. Nobody bangs more girlfriends and wives than he's just a friend, right? Because a lot of the he's just a friend 
are in the orbit of the backup plan. Sometimes it's a gay dude, right? Like I've seen women that have that have held a backup plan with a gay dude, right? Because it's like, well, if not if I'm not gonna have a baby with a guy and have a family, then I'll just get Charles over there to knock me up, sort of thing. Um, monkey branch is a real thing. It, like backup plans and and moving from guy to guy happen quite rapidly. I believe it's happened quite rapidly, historically speaking, from an evolutionary perspective, because you go back a thousand years, woman had a, uh, a mate, a partner, you know, whatever things didn't work out. He died. Saber tooth tiger got him, you know, died in war, whatever, you know, he was murdered, something like that. Uh, like men t typically went out and did, you know, the more dangerous stuff. And they still do, you know, today to some degree, there's not a lot of safety and checks and balances like we have, but she would have to move to another guy. She would have to monkey branch very quickly, right? She'd have to have a backup plan. And when women leave relationships, when they're when they're uh, going outside of the relationship, when they're betraying the guy that's committed to her, the monkey branch happens way faster than you think. So them sitting in their room, writing in a little di diary about how things went down, sulking about it, it's probably not the way that it's going down, you know, for being honest. They do move a lot quicker. And the last one, before we start getting to the uh, call and Q&A stuff, and again, guys, the StreamYard link is in the live chat of YouTube. It says join in and ask a question. Moff will uh, check your uh, audio and video in the green room before you hop in, but we'll we'll get to some Q&A tonight. And the last one is um, guys don't understand that women date more dudes than you date women simultaneously. The notion of spinning plates, I think, is a good concept for guys to use, especially if you've been burnt in the past, if you've been divorced and you need to sort of establish what the dating landscape looks like date multiple women simultaneously in a non-monogamous fashion is essentially what I prescribe to, to most guys. But most guys don't understand because they'll go out there, they'll find some interest in a, a gal. They, they date once, maybe twice. Um, and as soon as she touches his, his pee pee or shows a little bit of strong intimacy or interest in him, um, he's not talking to anybody else. Right. She hasn't even brought up the talk yet. She hasn't said, hey, where do we stand? Where do you see this going? I really dig your vibe. I want to claim you. I want to share you, blah, blah, blah. That hasn't even happened yet. She's still dealing with lots of guys. The things that most people don't understand, men especially, is that women are never really totally single, right? Um, even if you're talking to a girl on a dating app, she could be in a relationship with somebody else. She could be banging two other guys, you know, friends with benefits. She could be dating five other guys simultaneously, try to weigh them out to see what they're made of. Um, I shared the story a long time ago. I'll tell you again, you know, I was out with this girl once and, um, you know, she was by and she's, you know, telling me about this girl that she's setting up on her phone. Da, 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 da. She hands me your phone. She walks away. I'm reading the thing. Okay. And I close it. And when I close it, I'm left with her, um, text message inbox. Um, she's walked off. I'm just sitting here looking at it and wouldn't you know it, there was at least a dozen different conversations going on with other people, mostly dudes. Um, no admission to me that she was doing this. I of course didn't ask because I just thought whatever, you know, she's dating me. She's got strong interests. So everything seems on the up and up, but legitimately the way that women put guys in their phones that I've noticed anyway, is it'll be first name and then profession. So it'll be you know, rich entrepreneur, uh, Kev dentist, uh, Kyle, uh, broker of lumber or whatever, you know, <laughs> you get the point, Steve accounting, Kevin VP of sales. Right. Um, and it was like one, it's like, holy shit, like this chick's talking to a lot of dudes. Right. And it's like all recent conversations. Um, men don't understand that women entertain options, several options simultaneously. And they could be intimate with none of them. They could be intimate with all of them, right? Um, you'll only, I guess, learn that if you start diving down the rabbit hole and start reading messages like that, if you still have possession of the phone. But understand that women aren't just dating you. They're generally not just dating you. And women generally aren't just single. They're almost always dealing with somebody, talking to somebody, could be in a situationship and pretending like they're single. Um, so watch the behavior and listen to less of what they're saying is I guess what I'm trying to drive at here when we're going through these unintentional lies. Cause I don't think that women do this stuff to like hurt dudes. I don't think that it's intentional where, you know, they go out of their way 
to destroy or damage a guy's life. It's just a consequence of guys subscribing to comforting lies that don't serve them when they need to listen to the uncomfortable truth. Like when I say things like, women generally date more guys simultaneously than what fucking dudes do, right? Or, you know, women do cheat, but they do it more so when they're ovulating. Like that, like that ruins a guy's mindset. You know, they're thinking it's like, well, why would she do that? Like, why would she betray me when she's ovulating? Well, think about it, dude. What can happen when she's ovulating? What happens to her desire when she's ovulating? She's got more sexual interest then too, doesn't she? Right? So be attentive to behaviors over words is basically what I'm boiling this down to for you guys. And again, there's not just four, there's not just 10, there's, there's lots of these things out there. And without going through every single one and highlighting every single thing, I want you to understand that there is doing and then there's saying, and you should always believe the doing. Everybody, men, men and women, okay? You're dealing with a potential business partner who's offering you um, I don't know, equity stake in their whatever new startup thing that they're doing or their new district or division or whatever. Talk, 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 talk. Okay, well, what about the action? You know, where's the action in that, right? Like there, there has to be a connection to action. That's, that, that's where you have to connect. But I believe that guys love hearing words, man. There's this old saying, and I'll get to the Q&A in a second, but there's this old saying, bullshit baffles brains right? And guys love bullshit. I'll tell you that, you know, more than, more than anybody else out there, guys love bullshit. They just love hearing bullshit about, oh, I love you. Oh, we're going to be together forever. Da, 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 da. You have to remember something, guys. When a woman expresses an emotion to you today, at that moment, always add right now. Okay. I'm going to explain that to you. If she says, I love you. I will love you forever. Then you have to think in your head, right now because that's how she feels right now she reserves the right to change her opinion in five seven 12 years down the road right if you're not you know pursuing excellence if you're not on your purpose if you're not on your grind if you've gained 200 pounds if you're incompetent and you can't hold down a job and you can't provide for the family she reserves her right to change her mind about the love that she expressed for you today because she only felt it in that moment right now the burden of you performing on a long-term basis is on your shoulders, okay? I'm not going to get any more. I think I've talked enough on the show. Let's get into the Q&A segment. Again, the link to call in, it's pinned at the top. You got a question about anything, you want to chop it up, anything you're stuck on, anything you disagree with me on, you have a better solution to. Let's hear it. Uh, let's hop into the um, ad reel for the next uh, minute and change, and we'll get back into the Q&A. Again, the link's pinned at top. Moff's taking care of you right there. This episode is brought to you by the Unplugged Alpha Supplements and Grondike Soap Company. Brothers, if you're like me and you take what you put in your body seriously, you'll want to use the Unplugged Alpha Supplements. An obsession with absorption is what sets this line apart from the others. You want to make sure that you absorb as much of the supplements as possible so you don't end up peeing out expensive urine. My supplement line is made in the United States from the highest quality domestic ingredients. And unlike cheaper supplements from China and plastic bottles, Mine ship in dark glass bottles to keep your supplements fresher, longer, and won't seep endocrine disrupting plastics into your supplements. Nothing is a hard tablet. Everything is in an easily digestible, bioavailable capsule. You can filter all products by various categories, including testosterone support, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, immune health, sleep support, and performance. Visit theunpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop and use the subscribe and save option to get 10% off your supplement orders or use coupon code alpha10 for 10% off a one-time order to try it out. And I use Tactical Soap and God of War beard oil every day. Tactical Soap is a handmade product made in the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not conventional endocrine lowering toiletry chemicals. Both the soap and the beard oils are infused with bioidentical pheromones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness, to the opposite sex. Go visit coopersoap.com and get 10% off your order today. Guys, check out my website at richcooper.ca for more information on booking me for coaching, my community, my courses, and a whole bunch more. You can also find all the useful links pinned below in the top YouTube comment of all my videos. Now let's get on with the show. 
All right. Yeah, let's hop into this Q&A. We got a few callers here. Uh, I'm going to do Elijah and then contestant. And we got Chris as well. So let's hit Elijah first. How you doing, buddy? Hi, Rich. How are you? Good. What do you got for me tonight? Um, so a few weeks ago, you did a podcast with a sartorial shooter. Jewel. With Jewel, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, good podcast. During that uh, conversation you had with him, he started talking about... Um, like living in the West and how he was, he's Islamic and he's converted and stuff like that. And um, mm. he said, you started talking about like uh, women and promiscuity and stuff like this. And he asked you, he's like, what's your solution? Cause I've got one. And he said, he thinks religion and reverting back to some kind of um, religious practice is mm. going to solve a lot of these issues we have with, you know, promiscuity and, um, even just, like even just men having good values and stuff like this. And the more I kind of think about it, the more like the, I kind of draw the conclusion that like if we all lived, I'm not saying we've got to be like, you know, fucking saints or whatever and virgins till we're 30, but if we all lived a bit more consistently with some, some of those like, uh, like foundational things that religions promote, we might all be a bit better off and i just wanted to hear what like if you because you don't really talk about religion that much and i just wanted mm. to hear what your piece on it is and if you don't if you don't think it's a good idea why so my take on religion is i don't subscribe to any organized religion uh mm. i grew up in a house where my dad when i was young uh fell for the jehovah's witness stuff that caused a lot of acrimony between my parents and my mom was a uh, greek orthodox although not a regular uh you know uh subscriber to weekly events but you know uh, easter and uh, christmas were big on her side of the family um look man the thing with religion is it's like one of those areas that you're not supposed to talk about but then people always want to force you to talk about it sort of thing and, and it's like <clears throat> they all think they're right they all have flaws some of them are significant flaws. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, standard conventional Western type of religions like Christians and Catholics and all that sort of stuff, which I believe dominate most of Western countries now. Um, they like they've embraced the progressive weirdness, right? You know, there's rainbows everywhere. Like there's like there, there's literal celebrations in the month of June being proud about degeneracy and and pedophilia and some weird stuff and i'm not sure how they all interconnect but they seem to intertwine somehow mm -hmm. so with that being said it seems like as you know from an outsider that islam tends to solve most of that doesn't it or that's what jewel and andrew will say and a few yeah. of the other uh guys that are recent converts i don't know I guess my take is I'll just watch and see. Um, the problem that I have with most religions is it requires you to bend the knee to something that is supposedly greater than yourself, right? And then you could start having arguments about, well, if you're going to put mental point of origin as your main component of your decision making and where you're going to go with life and doing the work on yourself, how can you put something else ahead of yourself? So there's lots of different conversations that we can have with religion. Maybe one day I'll de dedicate a show to it because uh, I don't think I've ever done that yet. But the second part to your question was what again? Um, well, it was basically just that really. Like I think well, the, as well he talked about the promiscuity piece too because I think that um, – like uh, you say, like you got to like one of the red flags for women is if they've slept with lots of people. So right. I don't know. Like I just like the way I think about it is if if religion was a bit more prominent because it's like it seems like everyone back in the day was very religious, and then science came along and we all just kind of like it just got fucked off a bit. And like I like I think there's just there's some value in it, but. There's some like it's it lies somewhere in the middle. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like the yeah, I can't, I can't say for sure. You know, at yeah. this point, if there if there's any one that I agree with, yeah. um, I I don't think you're gonna put the genie back in the bottle. Like this, like this question of promiscuity, you know, yeah. that you bring it up. It's like okay, well, if she shared her body with fifty guys, 
and then all of a sudden converts to Islam or some, you know, religion where she's forgiven for her past sins or whatever. Um, has she though? Like, has that changed her, her past? Has her past behavior been erased or does it still exist? Could she have been alpha widowed by a bunch of guys? Could the imprint that's been left on her still exist? And I believe the answer to that is yes. I don't think that you can opt out of your past. Your past is your past. It's, it's, it's what creates who you are today, right? Yeah. So um, converting or acknowledging any kind of organized religion which might offer forgiveness, I don't think that's a solution. It being implemented in the family unit to prevent promiscuity or degeneracy, things like that, sure. I think, I think that's one of the areas that religion can be helpful if you subscribe to the original rule book. The problem is, is the original rule book in most religions, it's just being rewritten, not like every hundred years now, it's like every year they have a new rule. It's like, oh, we don't have enough people coming, you know, on, on Sundays, you know, congregation. Well, let's include this new bizarre flag and, you know, bring them all in sort of thing. And it's like, well, what's the point in having the rule book? Yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll do a, a dedicated episode on religion in the future because I can speak from my perspective, but I think it would be probably a good idea to have some, you know, have on a a Jew, a Catholic, uh, and a guy from Islam, like all these different sort of angles, to maybe sort of chop it up. So yeah. we'll do that. I know, I know you had um, Elliot Hulse on your podcast a while ago, and he's yeah. like kind of I kind of like see his videos pop up every now and again, and he's like he's gone pretty hard on the on the Christianity piece. Yeah. And I think it's going to be the solution to well, to he, well he had me on his podcast a couple of weeks ago. I think it just published on his channel. So if you go to his channel, oh, really? in the last week, he brought me on for an interview. He wanted to talk about the red flags, um, which was a cool conversation to have with him. But he definitely indicated very early on in the podcast that he's all about, um, you know, self control and encouraging yeah. guys, you know, not to be, you know, promiscuous or not indulging, I think was the word that he used. And it's like, well, if everybody's indulging anyway, and you're talking a, a very small handful of the population, you're not going to change the course of humanity with that. Okay. But yeah, check that out from that perspective. But I'll but I'll do a, a podcast in the future, just specifically on religion. Cool, sweet, bro. All right, I appreciate you. Thank you, Rich. All right, man. Take care. All right. Yeah, that question of religion is always I don't know. It's just one of those topics that i suppose has to be dealt with you have to confront it all right let's uh we got contestant here who is a female caller just got out of a long-term relationship hi contestant once called a professional girlfriend it says in the subtitle you're gonna have to unmute yourself there you go sorry i am on a mobile device and you are on one of my 87 tabs okay my <laughs> my apologies yeah, um, what do you got for me I tonight professional girlfriend really or have... formerly known as a professional girlfriend i suppose <laughs> right um i don't have much to say except for that the i've been listening since eight o'clock i think is when i logged in and everything you said was so i was just like yes 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 this is so true i wish more people would listen or grasp a hold of these concepts so i'm mm -hmm. um, just big fan of things that you're preaching i mean all okay. the way down to the religion stuff i agree i um i think i take a similar stance that you do to a lot of these principles so mm -hmm. um, what's a yeah, what's a professional girlfriend <laughs> or or a formerly known as professional girlfriend what is that in your view oh i um am coming to a place in my life where i'm accepting and realizing that even though I'm a pretty independent person, I'm super codependent relationship, like emotionally. Mm. And um, I've no surprise had things in my childhood that have um, contributed to that. So I have jumped from, I'm a serial monogamist, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like to say, and I have jumped from relationship to relationship for most of my adult life. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think that's a good thing? No, that's a horrible thing, but I also, or I don't want to say horrible. That's a little strong. Mm -hmm. It's not, uh, I wouldn't recommend it to others, but you know, you know more, you, you know better and you do better. So that's kind of where I'm at. Why is it that you think that the, that you can't find one that sticks? Um, I think it's a combination of me not wanting to work through things with mm -hmm. the person once 
um, I think I'm more afraid of dysfunction than I am of being alone. So when I am with a partner for an amount of time, things seem perfect and that honeymoon phase wears off, conflict starts up. Mm -hmm. I think that, oh God, I'm about to watch a car accident. Um, I think that my, uh, I guess my stance is reasonable and the other person continues to be emotionally heightened, mm -hmm. um, or elevated. It, it scares me. I mean, plainly the, the fear of the dysfunction continuing scares me. And why is every I, single relationship declared as dysfunctional for you though that's what i'm curious about um okay not every single one of them was that way some of them we were just uh there you know i could go into each one and be like oh mm. well this person wasn't going to college when i was and i found our conversations were changing and then this mm. other person really looked at money in a way that i kept trying to understand and didn't mm. and we differed there so value sometimes it's been values but um, other times I can see how if I would have maybe stayed longer through like an extra therapist, like <laughs> we'd gone through extra therapists <laughs> or something that um, it could have worked. But it's always, I mean, I, I assume a lot of the responsibility. Of Do you think that therapy works in long-term relationships? Um. I think it depends. I, I wouldn't. I it doesn't seem to work for many statements. people because whenever I talk to somebody that's like, well, you know, we went to therapy, but that didn't work out. It, it, I've never once had a person call in or do a private consult with me where they're like, oh, yeah, that was the best thing ever. It actually solved everything for us. Well, <laughs> I dare to say that is kind of confirmation bias on your part, because if they're coming to you, of course, the therapy didn't work. But there are I've heard people out there who they loved it. I also have friends that they started going to a therapist once every few months, just mm -hmm. as like a maintenance thing, because they knew that even the smartest, even the best people or relationships are going to at some point be wrong or have something that comes up. So they mm -hmm. wanted to learn in advance. Mm -hmm. um, but hmm. yeah. I'm sorry, you said that you've that you've gone from monogamous relationship uh, from one to the other. How many of these have you been through? Uh, I think I've had six or seven boyfriends. Okay. And how no old are you now? No engagements, no marriages, nothing like that, though. How old are you I'll now? I'll be 31 in July next month. Okay. And what's the plan for you now that you're in your 30s? Are you looking to build a family or...? I have told myself, I'm not a super religious person, but I was pretty religious in college um, and did not have a boyfriend for most of that time. Um, I, I guess there was also another stretch of time where I wasn't dating someone for about a year, but I've told myself that if Jesus started his ministry at 33, then if I'm 30 right now, I have a solid three years to be on par with like the alleged son of the most high. So I'm, my plan right now is just to build my own foundation and kind of focus on myself. And if someone ends up coming along in that time, that's great. But I do have some pretty high walls up right now because mm -hmm. kind of like you mentioned, I think my, like my idea of a clock and all of those other things are ticking. But in my sense, it's like, well, I don't want to jump into a mistake. I want to really, really be careful and like build it's myself a up. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy though. Like I've like I've talked to a few gals now where they've got walls up and usually the deeper they are into their thirties and the more unsuccessful relationships they've had, whether it was one or six or it was, you know, whatever it happened to be, uh, the walls get higher and higher. And at the end of the day, I mean, I think the notion of, well, we'll just see what happens. You know, like if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I guess it's meant to be. I don't think that's a good way to approach it, right? Like uh, we, we have limited grains of sand in the hourglass. And once they drop into the second jar, then that's it. You don't get them back. And maybe there's a bonus round, you know, and we're all 
cold and six feet under. Maybe there isn't. We don't know. But th but this life that we're living right now is one that you got to be more intentional about. And if you're intentional about building something or forming a family unit or having kids, you got to be open to meeting a guy that's on board on the same plane. One of the great mistakes that I don't think, you know, women understand and, you know, maybe you can feed back from your perspective. I'd like to hear you because you're totally anonymous. Nobody knows who you are. But the notion of moving from one guy to another guy to another guy. So Esther Perel, the lady that I was talking about earlier, she wrote that book, Mating in Captivity. One of the things that, she, that I've heard her say is that we used to be one person for life, right? So, you know, you go back 500 years, you find a person, it was that person for life, you know, till death do us part sort of thing. Now it's one person at a time, right? And that's some kind of like weird new bastardized version of monogamy. But one of the things that ends up happening is if you have difficulty in a relationship, you're less likely to try to work things out because you've already ended six of them, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, it's like, I okay, mean, well, what happens that. if we run into seven or eight or nine? Like it becomes easier and easier as time goes on if you can't work through shit. So I think right. it's more important to be more discerning. I do feel that truth and I would love to know what to do with it because I don't really have an answer for that. But mm -hmm. I have thought that also. I something that came up for me when you were um, speaking in the beginning was a quote that I heard recently uh, that I really liked was that we actually have two lives and the second one starts when we realize we only have one. Yeah. And I think that's super applicable to a lot of people in my age group. Yeah, we do, don't we? It's true. All right. Um, well, thanks for uh, hopping on and chopping it up. I got to get to uh, Chris and Lana that are waiting and a few others. But uh, yeah, if you got anything else in the future, let me know. Thanks. All right. Take care. All right. Uh, let's get, to, uh, Oh, hang on. Moff is in the back saying Lana's got a bounce. So let's take her next. Uh, Lana, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. What do you got for me? I heard you got to run. So I'm putting you up next. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, like my biggest issue here, I'm Russian. I, I moved to the United States like six years ago okay. and I was traveling a lot. Like, six states i was moving every year to a new state and i was obviously dating just going out on dates every time but i couldn't meet like a normal person in terms of like uh like cultural differences are so big and in my culture like eastern european girls um it's just so common that for men to be gentlemen to value their time to value like woman itself while mm -hmm. in the states i can't receive the same how do where do i meet those people who are like same as me like i can't like most you want to meet russians is what you're saying no, um, no, no it's not like specifically russians it's just no i know like, but you want to meet men that are strong virtuous masculine and know how to lead or gentlemen like this sort of stuff where do you live right now uh california orange county yeah, well, well, I mean, you're in the heart of soy right there. So that's one of the big problems you have. You're in skinny jean, man bun, you know, soyville where they drink soy lattes, you know, for exactly. breakfast, lunch and dinner. So that's that's one of the problems that you're going to experience. Not that there aren't strong masculine men in California. There are. There's just, you know, proportionally speaking to the population, you're going to find more softer liberal type men. So one of the things you can do is you can move to a more conventionally sort of masculine, more conservative type of state. Uh, if that's an option for you, but you will run into a lot of soft, weak, beta ties men in that part of the world. Yeah. Like, no, I don't want to move. Like I live next to Los Angeles and San Diego. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of men who are like really successful, mm. really like, I don't know, know what they want and stuff like that. But the re I don't understand what's the reason. Like, I feel like I'm one out of hundreds of girls because if I say no to him, because of this, this, and that, he's going to run to other girls who's going to say yes right away. That's why it is just, I'm not a value anymore here. You don't find yourself to be valuable. Why again? Because like, for Help example, even, on, even online dating, online mm -hmm. dating, right? I'm one of the thousand girls. Right. If I'm going to tell him no, if we're going to uh, go out and like, hey, I want serious relationships or something. He's like, oh, I'm just wanting something casual or something. Or like, okay, I want a serious, but I don't want to invest my time and like anything in you. Mm. And 
The thing is, I'm going to tell him no, but he's going to find a bunch of other girls who's going to say yes. Well, that's, yeah, that's one of the problems is that um, it's easy for men and women to indulge now without commitment. Uh, that's that's just a reality of, of the Western world, right? Is that toxic feminism has lied to women and they've said, you know, you can be promiscuous, be as promiscuous as men, you know, without consequence. Men are now indulging in all these women because they exist everywhere, right? There's uh, Women have been more open with their sexuality than any other time in history. Like I have friends that live in Russia right now. I have a friend that's actually in Moscow. I was just talking to him a couple of days ago. And he's like, the women here are beautiful. There's no, there's nobody that's obese. They're all feminine. You know, I can lead, they follow. It, it's, it's awesome. Like these are the things he's saying. So you're now in California going, well, I'm looking for a guy. I'm looking for a Western guy. I like it here. I don't want to move, but guys aren't taking me serious. Yeah. Well, if you want to be in a bargaining bargaining position for for guys to take you serious, well, let's take a look at Lana then. So, how old are you? Twenty four. And you live in Orange County, you said, right? Yeah, I live in Orange County. Okay. Um, and you're looking for a serious guy to what, like, date, yes. get married? You want to have a family, or? Oh, yeah, I do. I don't want serious relationships, with, which goes to marriage. And okay. I'm twenty four. I'm doing my masters. I'm living on my own. Like, I pay all my bills. I work, I like what do you do uh, a master's in? Invest. Yeah. I'm I'm doing everything on my own and it mm -hmm. makes me more masculine and I can show my fem like feminine energy because every time like I go somewhere and guys like hey, you know, I don't wanna like uh drive to you, you can just go by yourself. Can you just come in like come mm -hmm. by yourself? Like wow, like that's so crazy for me. <laughs> okay, so so you're in school right now, you're doing a master's in what and business administration in business administration and then what's the plan once you have that uh degree well so i'm a basketball coach i'm a basketball player uh i used to play division one basketball and i earned this um like scholarships because okay. of basketball okay and so I, how so how how tall are you i'm six one that's another <laughs> so you're a tall girl okay I'm, really tall. I'm taller than everyone and you're a professional basketball player or yeah yeah. And how much do you weigh? Uh, how much do I weigh? Yeah, weigh? That's, six, that's six foot one. Uh, I don't know. On kilograms, it's like 85 kilograms. Yeah, so you're so you're a big, strong girl. Yeah. You need a guy that's like six foot seven, basically, to deal with six foot one. Yes. So and what are the problems that you're going to run into at, at six foot one, which any gal, you know, your height, that's a professional basketball player is going to run into, is that... You're not, you're not desirable for most Western men, right? Like the cutoff for me, and I'm about six foot two and change. Cutoff for me is like five eight, five nine. Like I won't date five ten, five eleven. They're just too tall for me, right? It's yeah. too much. It's too much. So your like your options as far as do uh, here. Let's here. Let's bust out the I got standards, bro. Calculator. <clears throat> All right, Lana. We're about to dive down a deep rabbit hole for you viewers. Stay with me. Um, what is the age range of the of the ideal man that you're looking for? Like 26 to 34. 26, 34. Okay. So tight. Obviously, you don't want a married guy. Yeah. Uh, any preference? Uh, white, black, Asian? European. Um, oh, so Caucasian, we'll say European. Yeah. Uh, minimum height for you that you'll date? Six three. Six three. Exclude obese, or do you like thick guys? Fat no, guys? only only like only fit athletes. Okay, and minimum income that this knight in shining armor must make for you? Uh, at least like seven to ten thousand, just at least a month. Per month. Okay, so let's call it one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. Yeah. All right. You ready? This yeah. is the probability of you finding this guy provided that he is going to also dig your vibe back he's going to be looking at you like oh yeah i want lana um the stats are 0 0.062 percent of the available male population between the ages of 26 to 34 that meet your that meet your standards it's a very very small part of the male population right yeah so, what this? well you're you're trying to attract what's basically lower than half a percent of the available 
guys that you can date with, assuming that they're going to like you back. Right. Mm -hmm. So you've like, you've got to tick off every, every potential box that you can, if this guy shows up, what Mm -hmm. do what does a typical guy in that category want? I mean, if he's a strong masculine guy, he's going to want a feminine gal. He's going to want a woman that's able to make a house a home, that's got culinary skills, that's agreeable, that dresses feminine and looks beautiful and that sort of stuff like that. Um, you're going to have a hard time finding that guy. I'll be honest with you. You would you would be better off at six foot one living in Holland because everybody there is tall. <laughs> you're you're going to have way more <laughs> options over there. Like... Um, I'm guessing in, in Orange County where you're cruising and if you have a preference for tall Caucasian men over six foot three, like I think something like 16% of the North American population is over six foot tall and something like 4% is over six foot two. Yeah. And I know, I understand that. I know that there's not a lot of men like this. Right. And Lana, any guy that's six foot three or higher, he's spoiled for choice. Right. He can he can pick a five foot eight supermodel over you. Right. And she doesn't even need to cook because he's already loaded because he's got to be making ten thousand dollars a month. So (laughs) you see what I'm saying? Like, like you got the odds stacked up against you. So for you, it's a numbers game. You know, if you're going to stay there and it's where you want to be and it's the and it's the degree that you want to have. By the way, men don't really care about your degree, especially if they're going to be the household provider and you're going to have a family, you're going to stay home and raise a kid. It doesn't really matter. You know, for you, it's a backup plan for a lot of women. It's uh, you know, I can do this myself. I have my own place. I can pay my bills. I can take care of things like that notion. Lana leans more into toxic feminism than it does into conventional femininity. Yeah. But I can trust that like someone sometimes like someday. One That's exactly it. Happen. You can't trust. That's yes. That's exactly it. And this is what feminism has been telling women is you can't trust men, right? You have to have a degree to fall back on, right? Yeah. So wel- welcome to the great United States of America where you live. I don't live there. I live in Canada, obviously. But welcome to the West, you know, the new world and all that sort of stuff. It yeah. sucks. It sucks. Sure. It's not as easy as people think, right? No. Um, sure you, not. you, if you want to stand out to this guy that's over six foot three, that's gonna that's gonna pick you over everybody else you've got to you've got to tick off every box for them you got to be absolutely physically fit look sexy and beautiful in a nice uh, dress compliment to his life sweet you, you know like tick off all the boxes that these types of guys want you to tick off right um they're not going to care about your degree on the wall you know i hate to say it they're not going to care about your basketball career yeah. You know, I hate to say it. They just won't. Really? I thought I thought like as much more I'm doing that it's more attractive that like it's not. I'm a basketball player, I have a degree, I have this, this, and that. There's yeah. Lana, if 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 uh basketball achievements or uh degrees in business administration were sexy, then Playboy magazine would have degrees in them and basketball gals dressed up in their, you know, their basketball outfits, but they don't, Mm -hmm. they put women in lingerie because it's sexy, (laughs) right? There's no guy that's ever going to look at your degree on a wall and be like, Oh, Lana's degree is so hot. I I just, I need to look at that more. It's just looking so good. It's never going to happen. Right. They're going to look at you as an individual. It's a uh, big feminist lie. You still there with me or did I lose you with a connection? Hello. There you are. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. That's how it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got you. That's that's the reality of the world is be is be intentional with the guy that you're looking for. You're obviously going to have mm-hmm. to draw a line in the sand cuz you're quite tall, so, you know, mm-hmm. I know women don't like to look down at a guy. They want to look up at a giant, so there's that's not a lot true. of giants out there. <laughs> but, you know, put yourself in rooms where there's successful tall men. You know, where are you going to find them? Lots of athletes. You know, you got to find an athlete then basically is what you're looking for. But I don't, I don't see a lot of athletes dating six foot one basketball players with business degrees. That's also true. (laughs) Right. They're dating supermodels. So you have to, you have to pull that supermodel card. You know, you got to pull that beauty card. You got to tune it, tune in the femininity, get, 
get off leaning on the degree and on my basketball career and lean more on being a beautiful feminine woman. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for your advice. It looks like you got to run off. I guess you're playing a game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Good luck. Have fun. Thank you so much. See ya. Ciao. All right. Let's get uh, Chris in here. Chris, sorry for the delay, man. I, I had to grab Lana first because she had to run for her little game thing. What do you got for me, man? All good, mute? brother. How are you? There good you go. to see you again. Good, good. What's what's cracking? Yeah, you can hear me. Before, right? Yeah, you remember me? Back uh, in a uh, podcast in February. Moff has it here in the chat. Yep. Long-term relationship. Getting LTR a with the boob job. Okay, fill me in. Yeah, man. So you, you call them tailor maids if you remember that. Yeah. So everything turned out to be yeah. fine. No scarring. What was that? Tailor made tatas. Yes, sir. So everything turned out to be okay. It took a little getting used to, but no scarring, blah, blah, blah. I don't even really want to mention that. It's just for you to remember uh, the topic. Yeah. So I'm having a little rough patch with this chick, and I want you to kind of tell me whether or not it's an outlier of things I've noticed with her or it's all just red flags. Okay. Because I've had some situations with her where I spoke to you in February that following March, me and her went to Colombia, our first or second official trip together. Everything was excellent. We had a great time, introduced me to her best friend, even met a family member, her grandmother. It's pretty much like her second mom. Everything was fine. So the way I kind of keep it is more so, you know, you keep the distance, right? We live about an hour apart. Um, we don't text off and on every day, all goddamn day, but every day we usually kept in touch, mm -hmm. you know, checked in on each other. Everything was great. Now, just to preface my comments, I told you last time, I told her when I met her, I'm not going to marry you. I'm not interested necessarily. I won't say I'm not interested in monogamy, but it's going to be like this until, you know, you prove yourself a little bit more. And mm -hmm. at the same time, you and I know to spin plates and whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, to give you a little backstory about her, and I knew this at the time when I spoke to you, but again, it was never supposed to be this serious. We just happened to end up gravitating and liking a specific girl more than the others. Mm -hmm. That's what happened to me. So she was married for five years when she was with the guy for six. Okay, mm -hmm. She's 30 years old right now. We do the math. She was 25. Mm -hmm. Now, my whole rationale, like I told you, she's about 80, 85% of what you want in a woman and you're not looking to settle down, that's pretty damn good. Good odds for us. And my other thought process was if she was with one guy for those five to six years, which I kind of confirmed amongst family members and whatnot, it's better than her running around for five years. That's just I how I think. I so feel free to kick my ass whenever you feel like it. Did she have any kids so, out of that marriage? No, that's a big selling point. Okay, good. So the, ba the back story for her is that I don't want to come off like a dick, but a lot of the Latinas I've met, I live in Florida, so I run into a lot of them. Mm -hmm. A lot of broken families, even though they don't recognize it that way, perhaps it turns to be like a cultural thing to them, so it's normal. But grew up, you know, nuclear family. She has a younger brother, but surprise, she has an older half sister. Her dad was married. Her dad is about six, seven years younger than her mother, married at 22. Her mom was like 28. Her dad stepped out, had a kid behind the mom's back, even though they were married. The mom still went ahead. They were married, had this girl I'm seeing, had their brother. Of course, they divorced. The mom and the kids moved to Miami along with the dad, even though they're not together. The dad goes back to Columbia. You get the gist. Mm -hmm. So that takes a lot of wear and tear on somebody. So automatically in my mind, I'm like this girl, whether or not she admits it, daddy issues, right? And so... Um, she does was she also have married, a good like I mentioned to you, and she had divorced. She have no relationship with her father, brother. I got the red flags right here. I'm going to hit you with them. Okay. She says she has a great relationship with her father. Okay. She travels a lot, and I used to call her out all the time that yeah, you're traveling with other men and other friends. Not jealousy, just to fuck with her because that's what we do. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, I go with my dad. Why do you say that? Her Instagram corroborates that. Mm -hmm. Her Instagram is not private, by the way. Mm -hmm. But her dad is the kind of guy who's like, he never grows up. He's very selfish. She always says, my dad loves everybody except my mother. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. But when I say, you know, she has a little bit of issues, it never corroborates, right? Okay. Um, so over this past weekend in Colombia, everything was fine for the first two nights. 
But before we left the Columbia, she wanted to have a chat with me before we went on the second trip. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to bring out the, you know, where do we stand? Yada, yada, yada. And I brought it up to her like I did in the beginning. Listen, we need to keep things as as they are. You know, it's you and I, I and you. I always say you are my number one. You are the only girl I actually get physical with and want to do things with. But there are women that reach out to me, whether I knew them before you or I know them after you. But trust my word and that you're the only person I do things with. I love what we have going. I want to continue it to see how it plays out. And you and I both know we're doing that to kind of see how it plays out with her, right? You have to mm -hmm. test them. So we end up going to Columbia anyway. She never had a problem with that. We go to Columbia the first two nights of four. Everything is great. The third night there, we go to Medellin from Bogota. We fly in. And I tell you what, man, I don't know what the hell is going on, but she all of a sudden, her attitude, the mood kind of flips, right? And she started getting testy with me. So if I'm in like the airport and I want to exchange money because we need cash, she flips out. Like, we'll do it. And then she throws a hissy fit, red flags, that, oh, I told you I could get it from the bank. We lost, like, how much money on the exchange, but you don't ever listen to me. She says that a lot. Mm -hmm. Typical bullshit. Yeah. We go to the Airbnb. The guy wants me to send all my personal information to his fucking inbox. I'm like, well, why do I have to send him my passport, all this stuff? I already paid. Everything's reserved. She flipped out on me again. Why do you have to do this and that? I wigged out on her, man. I stomped my foot down. I slammed the door open and I fucking told her off. I said, not every time I open my mouth, it, you know, there's a problem enough already. She goes, takes her shower. This is the day we go into the Airbnb, our third night there. And I hear her crying and sobbing in the bathroom mm. and we're ready to go out for a good night. Right. And I knew what the game was. She comes out acting like nothing's wrong. She's dressed to the nines. I sit, I sit on top of her. I say, this is your chance to say whatever the hell you want to me right now. This is your only chance. And she goes in and she starts saying, I don't think that I can, you know, deal with you and how you are anymore. Blah, blah, blah. I said, do continue. How am I? My attitude. Um, it's always about you. You never mm -hmm. listen to me. You know, it's almost like predicated. And I'm and I told her, I'm not going to change for you or for anyone. If you think I don't respect you, you know, that's a shame that you think that because she throws that out a lot. I don't mm -hmm. respect her, right? Even though I take care of her and her grandma, I treat them respectfully. But I said, are you sure that you can't really, uh, you're still not sure whether or not you can continue to be with me like it's a burden? Mm -hmm. And she looked at me with a bitchy face and said, yeah. I said, all right, cool. Get dressed. Let's go. I just laughed in her face. The rest of that night, I'm just ignoring her, man. Like not ignoring her, being very classy, being very, very, uh, very curt to myself and not in a dickish way. Mm -hmm. We're going to eat. I'm making all the decisions. Oh, I want to eat here. We sit down. I'm or I'm not a drinker, man. I'm ordering drinks for myself, delicious food, which is my favorite. And she's just sitting there like a dumbass mm -hmm. on her, you know, looking at her phone because she doesn't know what to say. Like, wow, I didn't get this guy. And it's not the first time that this has happened with prior women, but with her, this is a really big step for me to be doing this. How end old of is the night, trick, Chris? Thirty, brother. And you're how old? I'm thirty-three. She, yeah. uh, she, uh, exactly. I mean, I literally, I want to hit some red flags with you. You tell me what the outliers are. If she's just a whack. How job. many, how many of the red flags does she have on my list? I got one. I got two. Just read them out. Just read them out. Which, which ones? I got, so we got daddy issues. Yeah. We got keeps men from her past around that being okay. a, a best friend, not necessarily okay. men, but a best friend. Okay. We got jealousy. That's typical of women. She has mm -hmm. the tattoos I told you I'm not really fond of and a bunch How of many? piercings in the ears. How many times? Oh, man. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven, man. And okay. she wants another. Okay. And she would. But let me tell you why I look at it as an outlier. You kick my ass whenever you see fit. Okay, go. So All right. So she does see fits and she does whatever. So we go out. Everything is fine near the end of the night. She wants to get cozy again. She starts mm -hmm. reaching out after I put her through a shit storm. End of the night, uh, Rich, we're in the jacuzzi. We enjoy ourselves. It's a great night. We yeah. still have an honest conversation. Listen, if you're not comfortable being with me, maybe it's a cultural thing. Maybe you need to get with someone who's of your culture. You know, maybe they understand you more. So I'm telling her, go get with a beta, you know, Colombian boy that you were with. Mm -hmm. 
before the next day, everything is great, but I'm still kind of pissed off. So she has an agenda planned. We go out and I'm still very respectful. What do you want to eat? It doesn't matter, love. Whatever you want to eat, I'm down for. Where do you want to go? Baby, it's your country. Whatever the fuck you want, I'm down for. I'm here to spend time with you. Because I don't yeah, but deal with it. You, you deferring to her in all these areas. Like, oh, what do you want to eat? I, I don't know. care. Whatever you want to eat. Where do you want to go? Wherever you want to go. Like, like she's, she's, she's actually shit testing you to see if you're leadership masculine type of material. Like, Latin women do this, right? I know, brother. I know. I, I, you I was just rolling with the punches at this point just to see where it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I, everything you tell me, I know the reason why okay. I'm doing that is because it was the first time and the amount of months, the six months prior that I've stopped my foot down and taken the assertiveness mm -hmm. should be fucking, I know the shit tests don't stop, but I've done it countless times. And it's like, she kind of just hit me. She, she overdid it this time. So I was flipping it on her to make her, to show her, listen, you don't like me for how I am when I'm with you. Let me show you how I am when I'm not acting like myself. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how much you fucking like it. And there's a reason why I did that. So needless to say, she wasn't happy. I'm giving her attitude the whole day. But let me tell you how this escalates. The same story till the end of the night. We have this huge blow up over lunch where I put her in her place and told her enough. Quit saying I disrespect you, yada, yada, yada. We get home. And mind you, within the months leading up, she kept asking, are you talking to anybody? I already had this, qu this question answered to her brother. I said, there are women that reach out to me. I'm not doing anything with them, but you want to let them know that you fucking can if she acts out. She also, when I first met her, said, I love the way you interact with people when we're out at restaurants, when we're in the mall. I mean, women gravitate towards when I talk with them, smiles, they make conversation, and we know why, but men as well. She loved that about me, but it tended to become more of an overbearance, hence the jealousy and the hissy fits. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, our last night there before we left, we get back in the jacuzzi after we made up. Brother, she did everything she could do to me under the sun and then some in that fucking jacuzzi. And I did whatever the hell I wanted to, where I wanted to, etc. This is the kicker. All right. She goes and takes a shower. I go take a shower after. She comes back out, sits on the balcony, says, Chris, she says, this is your last chance to be honest with me. Are you, are you talking to anybody else? And I kept telling her, bitch, I don't know what you're talking about. Tell me who I'm talking to and I'll confirm or deny. She just kept keeping it as a broad statement. Mm -hmm. I told you, but I'm not messing with anyone. She says, that's it. We're done. I can't take you. You're lying and I can't trust you. So I said, what the hell's wrong with you? She kept it quiet for a day and a half until we're back in the airport. I spent the day of travel delays with a woman that wouldn't speak to me. And I made it like from my ass. She went through my phone. She saw text messages of people I already knew and I met mm -hmm. after. And I told her about two of them. Mm -hmm. One of them for a business opportunity. Two of them. And she used it against me that I was lying to her the whole time. Even though in my mind, when you ask me that, I'm thinking she's asking if I'm fucking around. Because I'd already I'd already answered it, but the comprehension is not there. Let me just so, let me just get to the point here, because I mean I got a couple other people that want to hop on and ask some questions too, and I see that this could potentially go down a whole bunch of different paths. Um, so she's thirty years old. She's got a bunch of red flags. You've known her for how long now? You said six months. Six months. Um, she's had the talk. Where do we stand? You basically and I told said, her. And sorry, you're number her. one. Okay. I told her you're number one and uh, let's keep it going. But Have you ever traveled you know, with this chick before? Yes, sir. I, I, I told you last time we went to uh, Georgia, like for a weekend trip, and I went to Colombia the first time. I was on the other two trips. They were excellent. And I told her, you're the only person I go on trips with. I'm showing, I always tell her, actions speak louder than words. I also tell her, Mr. Rich, don't make other people's problems your problems. These red flags are all her fucking problems. And I've told her, and if she's just that jealous and that insecure, which she denies, she says her dad is a great influence on her when he, we know she's not. Um, she divorced the husband who had a great job and she would bring up loyalty to me all the time. Love isn't everything, Chris. It's loyalty. I said, where did loyalty get you if your husband was so loyal to you? You fucking well, look, left him, right? Look, loyalty, come on, right? Like how many guys are you laid with, right? Exactly. Right? Like if you were loyal, then I would be the only guy that you're with. So let's start with this here, sweetheart. Okay, come on. Look, um, the guys in the chat are like, complicate life, justify why, you know, of course. Run. dude, look, I get that some people have an affinity to certain types of women and, you know, you seem to have like this thing for this 
red flag Latina chick with some tailor made tatas now. Good. You've had your fun. You know, you've had your exercise. You've seen what she's made of. You know what the rest of your life is potentially going to look like if you deal with this chick. And it's not going to be fun. You already know that. That's why I wanted to talk to you and see what the hell you'd say about it and extrapolate. Because she, like me, like me sitting here, Chris, for the last five minutes, listening <laughs> to you explain your interactions with this nightmare, like yeah. just, just gives me anxiety and pain, right? Like when I travel with my chick, I have none of these headaches, none. I know. It's I know. good. I have a good time. We laugh. That's how it was initially. Food That's how good. initially. That's good why I wanted to ask good. you. Everything's happening. And it's jiving always. And not just, yeah. you know, for the first six months, for a long time after that. I, look, man, I, I mean, you can invite a chick like this in your life and make her a girlfriend. You can make her a wife. For you fun. can make her the mother of your kids if you want. But All your life fun. will suck. Yeah. Your life you know will what, suck. Brother, you know what's funny? The bitch tells me, you're the only guy I ever thought about having kids with. I laughed. And you know what? The reason I'm why sure I called she's in. never said that to anybody else before. Yeah. The reason why I called in is to enhance your red flags because nothing, I went back and read them. Nothing hit me harder than after a weekend with this chick and I read the daddy issues and you said she can be BPD, a freak in the sheets and the lady in the streets and yeah. she can make it seem like she's, you're finally appreciated. You're yeah. great. You know, she cooks for you. She, she takes care of you. Me. She's homey. She understands me. But yeah. that a drop of a hat, the bitch can flip from hot to cold. Boom. And that's the reason why I'm talking to you because the most she's made I, of that, that's what she is. That's what she's made. And of. so that's what she's about the representative that you're seeing in the jacuzzi when you're having a good time, when she's all Chris, I love the way you handle restaurants and the way people respect you and all that. So, all of that stuff. That's a yeah. dog and pony show, right? That's, yeah. that's the representative, the real person that you deal with. And I'm talking to all you guys watching this too. The real person that you're dealing with is when there's conflict and when there's issues that come up in a relationship because that's the person you're going to be dealing with later on down the road. The representative yeah. is going to go. That, you know, that that crazy sex in the jacuzzi, boom, you can say goodbye to that real quick. Yeah. Because as soon as she's got her meat hooks in you and she's yeah. got access to your money and you you know you're in the same house and you Never. said I do, it's it, man. It's over. Never. It's nightmare. It's nightmare city. Well, I told her no in the very beginning, and I think that's what pissed her off because I do think that trying. they tend to gravitate, but yeah. They gravitate keeps... to what they to, to what's difficult and what they're having a hard time getting, which is exactly. why she's chasing you. And at the end of the day, dude, like these Latin chicks, they want to be with a strong, masculine, virtuous leader. You've tried to play that card, and she keeps yeah. shit testing you. She keeps shit and, testing you over and over again. And, and it's, it's just like, tired. it's cute. It'll you just know, end. It's cute the one time where you have the banter back and forth or it goes on to the next thing and you have a little bit of banter back and forth. But if it keeps Correct. happening over and over and over again, she's basically telling you, yo, Chris, this is going to be your life for the rest of your life. If you I don't trust me. you. That's what she's saying. And so, I have abandonment issues and I went send to your her to phone. the streets from whence she came. I just wanted to get your your intelligent <laughs> opinions on it because I know exactly. Friend, Chris. Let it go. My man, right, my friend, L love you. Be okay. safe. Take care, brother. Send her back to the streets from whence she came. All right, let's grab uh, Cyan here. Let's see what he's got for us. I'm a, I'm up. Cyan or it's Kian. Kian, sorry, Kian. man. It's Kian. Ga it's a Gaelic name. Gaelic. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody gets it. Like I, I've been, I've been getting like weird names for like the last. 19 years it's kind of no problem weird. okay so what do you got for me it says here uh moff said you dated a gal they broke up she racked up a notch count and she wants you back yeah so tell me so tell me what happened why did you guys break up first of all uh well so i you know i didn't know if it was a good idea to be with her because i was i wasn't getting a lot of you know, attention in the relationship because she was always on the phone and it's just, I don't know, and it's led, me, it's led me to have a lot of bad relationships because just from that one instance that 
I have, I don't know, I just didn't, I, I wasn't feeling like I was having a lot of attention from her, so I ended it, and then uh, mm -hmm. I saw, you know. How long ago did you guys break up? How long ago did you guys break up? Uh, it's been, I think, a year and a half since we've been together. Year and a half. And okay, so you're with her for a year and a half. You broke up how long ago? No, I'm saying we we broke up a year and a half ago. Oh, it's been a year and a half. It's been that long, and you're still thinking. Okay. Do you have a uh, speech impediment? Uh, Are you hard of hearing or? Uh, yeah, I have a speech impediment. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm autistic. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. So so you broke up with her a year, a year and a half ago. And then she's yeah. dated a bunch of guys and and now she wants you back. Is that what's happening? Yeah. How many guys did she date? I think eight. Eight dudes. And she volunteered yeah. this information to you? Yeah, I I've she she's told me that she's dated a lot of guys. I've heard it from all my friends. A lot of my friends have dated her, and it's just hang on, your friends dated I'm, her too? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, these are your friends. Yeah, well, I can, I people can tell been, you, people have been close to. Well, I, my friend, I mean, I can tell you what you're made of if your friends are behaving that way, because birds of a feather do flock together, right? Yeah. You've got some, you've got some problems that you need to stare down in the mirror, right? Yeah. These guys are not your friends, and if you're allowing people like this in your circle, then it says a lot about the people that you choose to allow in your inner circle. So. She's now contacted you back and she wants you back. What does she say? So at graduation, after, so at prom, uh, she asked me, like, do you want to get back together? And I told her that I would think about it because, mm -hmm. you know, she has a lot of, and what, and like her ex was like right next to her. And I was like, okay, I'll, let, let me think about it. So I've been thinking about it for like, uh, two weeks, and I don't know. How old are you, my friend? I, no, I turned twenty in November. How old is she? Twenty-one, I think. Yeah, twenty-one. She's twenty-one, and you know her from school, I'm guessing. Yeah. So you want to know of getting linking back up with a girl from a year and a half ago that slept with eight dudes? Some of them are your friends. Is a good idea. Not slept, but dated. No, they never did anything. They just dated. Just mm. dated. Like it's... So she's a virgin? Uh, I think so, yeah. So you never slept with her? No, 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 no. I, no, I'm not trying to do that until I find the right person. And you think she's the right person? I, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. I've been having... You know, as I said, I've been having a lot of bad relationships. So just. How do you know she hasn't slept with any of these eight guys? All of them have told me that they haven't. Mm. But I, I, I don't know. Maybe one of them is lying, but I don't know. So don't you know. had to go through the exercise of talking to all eight of these guys about what happened with them and this lady you dated with a year and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're not going to like what I'm going to have to dispense here for you, my friend. But the, I don't the, care. I okay. don't care. You're like one of the here best. It comes. Here it comes. Yeah. You need to totally. you need to sit the man down in the mirror and have a serious conversation with him about life and where you're going to go in life. Because the one thing that is preoccupying your mind right now is some chick that ran off on you and then spent time with eight of your friends. And by the way, none of my friends would do anything with my girl. Those are the kinds of friends that I have. Nobody. They wouldn't touch her. If we broke up and we were done, they would not touch her. They would not be interested because she was mine. Well, you have so, you have some pretty you have some pretty good. Well, I have yeah. well I have high caliber <laughs> friends, but I set very high standards for myself and the people that I surround myself with. So one of the reasons why you're dealing with this problem is because you're allowing 
low caliber people in your life. I don't know if that's because you don't have a very high opinion of yourself or, or where you're going or what you're doing, but you're entirely preoccupied with this with this girl from a year and a half ago. That that's one of the reasons why I've been tuning into, you know, like you watching your YouTube, watching like Justin Walt, watching like how long Jay how Waller. long did you date this woman for? What was the total uh, time that you guys were dating? A month. A month. For a month. Yeah. So you spent a month with her together. Then you broke up for a year and a half and she dated eight dudes. Do you think your priorities are a little bit upside down? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think I think it's obvious with the Well, with, look, man, like the first step in an alcoholic beating his drinking problem is recognizing he's an alcoholic. So that's why I'm kind of starting from that point is you realize this is a problem that you're obsessed with this girl. Like you've got a case of one itis and one itis is like the simple definition is having an unhealthy attachment to one woman. This is one woman that you dated a year and a half ago for a month. Like as a general rule, if you're, if you're with somebody, you're intimate, you commit to one another, you love each other, you spend a lot of time together. Let's say you're together for like two years. It's entirely normal for you to think about that person probably for a couple of years after you guys break up. But you're with a chick for a month and haven't stopped thinking about her for a year and a half to the point where you're calling in on my show to ask me this question now. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a, yeah. So that's, that's a, so that's a that's an obsession that you shouldn't be dealing with because my friend, like you're 20 years old. What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, what do you want to do with your life? Uh, be a sports analyst. Be a sports analyst. Okay. And what does a sports analyst do? So like anal analyzing, like uh, doing, like, do you watch sports? Like no. being like, oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I don't like watching other people on a soccer pitch chase excellence. I'd rather do it myself. <laughs> I wasn't talking about soccer, but yeah, okay. Football, baseball, yeah. anything. But yeah, a sports yeah, analyst yeah. will watch games and then analyze the games. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. So what are you doing right now to get closer to that goal? Uh, watching a lot of baseball. Okay. <laughs> watching a lot of sports. like. Okay. But are you doing anything to get closer to the goal of being a sports analyst? Like, what are you doing in that realm? Not as much as I should be. But you have a YouTube channel where you're breaking down games. I have a YouTube channel. I just haven't been able. I just haven't started make making those videos. I've been. You've been, making you've been videos obsessed about with this. random stuff. Yeah, but you've been obsessed no, with Becky. Like, no, she's been like. She was not in my mind, and then she and then she asked me. Mm -hmm. That, that's how she got back in my mind. She asked me. Okay. You should be on, like if you're following baseball, let's say, um, and you're tuning in the games, you know, the player stats and everything, you should be on YouTube regularly streaming about the synopsis, the breakdown, what's going to happen. Like there's lots of guys that do this right now on different platforms talking about whatever it is that they're good at analyzing. And people tune in to listen to hear the analysis. Um, that's what I would be doing. That's what I would be spending time on, not thinking about Becky and whether or not she's going to be a good choice for me in the future because you're going to make the exact same mistakes that you made before if you don't level yourself up, if you don't unplug from all this crap, all these beliefs that you have that don't serve you. Because that's how you got to where you got to today, right? You can always take a look at somebody's results in life, their relationships, what they do for a living, how they spend their free time. You can always assess their belief system by looking at their results and what they're doing and the choices that they make. And my friend, you need to raise your standards for yourself. You need to surround yourself with better friends. You need to make yourself that guy that, that gals want to be with and other men want to be. You have work to do. Yeah, that's why I've been mostly watching you and you know, like Justin, Wall you you and you and Waller, like two of the oh, like two of the biggest YouTubers I watch. So, 
Well, I appreciate you watching my stuff, but I want you doing stuff too. Like I would rather you say, Hey man, I've committed to a schedule of creating content twice a week on these dates after the games so I can break them down. And even if you do a show and it's crickets and only your mom watches it or one of your friends watch it, that's better than nobody. But you might find in a month or two months or six months, you have an audience of 50 people watching or 100 people or even more. You might even build up 20,000 people, essentially a stadium watching your stuff because you analyze it so well. But you'll never know if you don't get there, if you don't put in the time, if you don't do the work. You, know, you get caught up on stuff that doesn't matter. Yeah. And the, look, dude, again, like I'll say it again, life is short. Time will move very, very quickly. Before you know it, you'll be 30. And in no time, you'll be 40 and 50. And then you're going to be like, well, what happened in my life? What did I do with it? Right? Yeah. If you have plans, and it sounds like you have a plan. If you have plans, then start, then start executing it. Don't worry about Becky. And and my friend, certainly don't deal with women that get involved with your friends. And don't get involved with friends that get involved with your ex-women. There's two serious problems there from both angles. Yeah. Where do you live in the world? Uh, Boston. Boston. Okay. Well, I hope that helps. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Rich. Thanks standards. Yeah. man it starts with that thanks okay buddy take care all right two 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 man let's let's hope it uh let's hope it does change his life uh let's check out the super chats here uh the uncle the alpha turned into kevin samuels with these women but rich is very calm and knowledgeable thanks yeah i'm just look man i want to i want to take call-ins from everybody um and I guess sometimes a lot of the dudes that call in, they can get pretty repetitive. So I think, uh, you know, doing it, doing it from that perspective opens up some of the dialogue and the conversations. Meg here says, guys, is Meg a guy or a gal? Okay, Meg, uh, guys, is a 15 age gap noticeable? Like if the guy's 40 and the girl is 25, well, if the guy's 40 and the girl's 25, that's, that can totally work. That's, you know, it's 15 years. If she's not a kid, and, you know, if she's serious about being a compliment to the dude's life and, you know, uh, doing something with a guy. But if she's in a party year still and she wants to run around and, you know, probably not going to not going to work out unless he's into that stuff, too. But uh, usually somewhere between they say seven to 15 years is totally fine. It's when you get into like territory where it's like 20, 25, 30, 35 years or if you're like um, Al Pacino what is he like 86 and his girlfriend's like 28 and she's pregnant um yeah not a big deal not a big deal i wouldn't sweat it and i think that is it all right let me just pull him off and we'll say goodbye real quick buddy nope well that was interesting you sent me some uh a couple interesting ones yeah a couple I'll interesting so. callers yeah man dude um yeah any final words before we wrap up no, it seems like we've had a, a pretty good streak of callers over the last couple of weeks. It's definitely um, a good mix. If you guys want to get into the fold and you're trying to get call in, DM me right here. Instagram is the best place to reach me. We'll, we'll try to maybe fit you in and get you scheduled for a show. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff and uh, looking forward to more. Yeah, it's helpful to have Moff running the green room, make sure everybody's audio and, vi and video is set up and you know he'll line up people for the, uh, for the show in advance. So if you got any questions about how to do it, it's, that's his IG there. Just hit him up and uh, I'll definitely set you up. Thanks, brother. All right. Uh, let's hit the outro reel and uh, sign off, I guess. Say, say goodnight, sayonara, and all that good stuff. We'll see you guys soon. All right, guys. If you enjoyed that podcast, make sure you visit my website at richcooper.ca to learn more about my courses, my book, The Unplugged Alpha, community, or booking me for private coaching. Also, if you are a Canadian with $15,000 or more of credit card debt and what you are doing right now isn't paying off the balances, then visit totaldebtfreedom.ca and hit get a free quote to see if you qualify to settle your credit card debt for less than you owe today over the next 48 months. Make sure you check out the top pinned comment on YouTube for all the links mentioned during the show. Peace.